What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you missed the last video, it is a must see. We got these motor mounts all fabricated, got them working perfect. So today we got some more work to do. What I'm gonna start with is getting the frame painted, all the mounts and everything inside of the truck painted up. Like I said in the last video, I'm gonna wait to powder coat the mounts that bolt on the motor, just because I may need to clearance that for something if I do run into some issues. So I'm gonna leave that for now, but we'll start with painting the frame, and then we can get the clutch, flywheel, all the adapter stuff buttoned up, and drop the motor back in and start hooking some stuff up. So if you did miss the last video, I'll go show you real quick the mounts. So there's the frame mounts right there, and then the mount that bolt onto the motor are here. You can see I welded some spacers on there. All gusseted it up, quarter inch plate. So this stuff should be plenty, plenty beefy for a little light motor. So let's get to work. What I'm using for paint is this primer, acid etch primer from Euro Spray, and then the old chassis black. So prime it, let that sit for what, 15, 20 minutes, and then we can spray some black on it. We got that motor mount on. What we gotta do with getting this motor in is this mount needs to stay off in order to get this tandem pump underneath the heater core hoses here. So it kinda, it's a little bit tricky. You kinda gotta slide it in and tilt the motor this way to get it underneath and then we can get this other side mount on. So I was going to go ahead and throw the clutch, flywheel, everything on, button that up 100%, but there's supposed to be some Nordlock washers on the studs. So these studs thread into the crank and then they go through the back here in the uh, flywheel adapter, just like that. And then it takes a Nordlock washer and one of these nuts, but somehow, some way, these Nordlocks aren't in here. I misplaced them or I didn't get them or something. I don't have any. So either I need to order some online or I need to run into town, see if I can find anywhere in town that has these washers. It's kind of a special locking washer just to make sure that never loosens up. So I definitely want the good Nordlock washers. So I don't know what I think I'm gonna do for now. I gotta pull the motor back out anyway to button up a few other things, powder coat the motor mounts and all that good stuff. So it's not that big of a deal to get that buttoned up right now. One thing I wanna do real quick is see if I can fit my Toyota uh, oil pressure sensor in the housing here. What I did on my old truck, or the red one, is I just used this adapter here. Oops, dropping washers. Um, this is a M10 by one. On this side, the male side, the female side is 8th MPT, which that is the Toyota, factory Toyota size. What I like to use is some thread sealant. This stuff here, this is a Permatex uh, thread sealant with PTFE. So I'll wipe some of that on both sides of the thread and we'll thread that in. And it should clear, really this thing isn't much longer than the factory Volkswagen sensor. You can see it's gonna thread in right about there. So it's a little bit longer, but we should still clear the radiator hose and motor mount and everything just fine.
All right, you can see that clears no problem. We got plenty of clearance to the uh, thermostat housing and motor mount, everything clears just fine. So should be good to go. Let's throw this motor back in and we'll start working on other systems. I got all my parts for the main power steering uh, line so we could start building that. And I got a bunch more stuff ordered up. So once we get that, we can start building. Um, one thing we're gonna have to do is probably move this condenser in order to fit an intercooler. You can see a lot of these lines are kind of sticking way out. So I haven't decided exactly. I might have to space the radiator back, move the condenser back in order to get enough room up here for an intercooler. So we can start working on that too. But either way, let's get the motor in, get it set in the motor mounts, and we can start tackling some projects. One thing I decided to do real quick before we throw the motor in is this clutch system. So it's gonna be a lot easier. A lot more room right now to throw the slave cylinder on, that line that wraps around, and then there's that steel braided line that I put on right there that we need to hook up. So let's get all that on real quick and then we'll drop the motor in. All right, that's all together. One thing I keep forgetting the powder coat is this little bracket here. So I'm just gonna kind of leave that there until I powder coat something next. I will powder coat that at the same time. So that just bolts on onto the bell housing through one of the bolts and then holds that line in place. So we are good to go there. Let's grab this motor, toss it in, and we'll see about building a power steering line. Oh yeah, now that is a good feeling, having the motor sitting on its own weight with no chain, no nothing holding it up, just the motor mounts. So she's still sitting like it should. I think what we're gonna start with is building the main power steering line because I already have all the hose and fittings for that. So let me get it all out, show you what we're doing and see if we can get this thing to work. So here is everything we need for the power steering line for the main high pressure line. We got a 90 degree fitting, a straight fitting, obviously the hose. This is make sure it's a stainless braided line. This stuff is made for a lot higher pressures, so you don't want to use the nylon stuff. Make sure it's stainless steel. And then we got our two fittings here. So power steering pump uses a banjo fitting, just like that. And then this is kind of a special fitting. It took a little while to find it. So obviously 6AN on this side, and this side's the inverted flare with the right thread for the steering rack on the Toyota. I forget the thread, but I'll have it linked down below the website I bought this from. I couldn't find this on Amazon, eBay, none of the regular places I usually buy, that none of them had the inverted flare on this side. So I'll link this one. This is actually made for the Toyota power steering system. So I'll link all this stuff down below. What we gotta do is pretty self-explanatory. We'll thread this into the steering rack. We'll thread the banjo onto the pump here. So I'm gonna come straight out like that. That 90 is gonna shoot down and it's gonna wrap around underneath the motor mount and you can see that red plug. That is the high pressure port on the steering rack. So get these fittings on, get the line cut to length. And I've never used the stainless line. I don't know how tough it's gonna to be getting the ends together. I know the nylon isn't too bad, but we'll get the line cut and see if we can get these fittings on and get this line made.
All right, we got that line built. Wasn't too bad. The only issue I was having, you, you, once you pull that tape off, you gotta go really quick or these braids start to kind of flare out and it makes it a big pain in to get into the fitting. So pull the tape off right away, kind of stick it on one end and then use a screwdriver to kind of push the braids back into that fitting and then just like thread it on backwards basically down the hose and then spray some WD-40 inside of it. Make sure that it's lubricated so the fitting doesn't just push the line out of this lower fitting. And then you can thread it in all the way down until it seats. So we are good to go there. I gotta tighten up the banjo fitting and crawl underneath, tighten up the fitting on the rack and then we can throw that line on. All right, we're all tightened up. I am so stoked at how good this thing fits. You can see it runs right there underneath the motor mount and then way down there to the rack. So fits really good, clears everything. This 90 just fits real perfect right there. Just right alongside the pump. Got about a quarter inch of room. So nice and tucked up tight. Another thing I wanna show you guys real quick, you first gen Tacoma owners doing a swap. You're gonna be extremely stoked about this. Fuel line, it is so easy with a fuel line. This is the factory uh, Tacoma fuel line. You can see it threads right on to the factory fitting here. And I already cut this, when I first put this motor in, I already cut this to length. You can see, oh crap. It is too short. You know what? I think what I did was I cut this line when I originally had the motor standing straight up now that I tilted it back farther that way, this line is too short. But what I was saying is it's a 5 16 line and filters a 5 16 that goes right, if it was long enough, right into there, put a clamp on that, tighten that down and your fuel line's done. The only thing you'll have to do for your return is it's a 5 16 here and I'm gonna use the factory quarter inch right here so you'll need a reducer from 5 16 to quarter and then hook that up to the factory turn line. So I guess I'm gonna have to source another factory Tacoma fuel line for this feed. Guys, you gotta check this out. So I'm working on one of the heater core lines. I'm just kind of screwing around, seeing what I have and what I can make work. So I found this fitting. This is off the BHW factory fitting and the hose I'm working on is this one here. So I kept this factory hard pipe that goes all the way back to there. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty close. This fitting does fit, no problem. Right back. It still needs to be pushed down a little bit, but it's a nice tight O-ring fit. So that fits just like that. And we gotta hook that up to the heater core there. So I got this 90 and then I found this pipe here or this hose from, this is the factory lower radiator hose. You can see I cut that end off there. The amazing thing about this this 9090 is exactly the right height and if you look the heater core on the Toyota side is smaller than the output or the this fitting here and you can see the hose is smaller on one side versus the other so I do need to trim this here I'm going to get this fitting on here we'll get it on the truck and then I'll trim that and we should be able to just plug and play right on in the truck and it should work like a champ.
Okay, maybe the height isn't absolutely perfect, but that thing fits so freaking good for just finding a hose out of the bin. I know some of you guys are probably gonna laugh at me at how excited I am. If you've ever done a motor swap, you know heater core lines and radiator hoses, at least on most swaps, are one of the hardest things to find without having a splice, you know, especially when you have two different size hoses. If you just go to the store and get a hose, it's gonna be the same diameter on both sides. So finding a hose that's that close with the right inside dimensions on both sides is actually a pretty hard find. So the rest of these radiator hoses on this truck, at least on this swap, are gonna be fairly easy because I did do this welding here. So I'm just gonna have to do a 90 here and then a 90 into the radiator. And that lower hose is gonna be even easier. I'm gonna use the factory hose, snake it all the way down here. And all I'll have to do is get one splice. That's the only splice I'll have in the cooling system is the lower hose just to extend it to the radiator. So. That is going to work like a champ. I am super, super excited about that hose right there. All right, guys, here is the intercooler I picked up. Hopefully we can make this thing fit in the front end of the truck. So this is a 27 by 11 and three inches thick. So it looks like it'll be close. We'll have to mock it up there. Like I said, it'll probably have to do some work to the whole condenser and all these lines and everything. Move that all back. I did put the radiator in just a little test fit and it looks like we can move the radiator back quite a bit. So shouldn't be that big of a deal. We'll just have to figure out all these lines and make sure we can get everything to clear. So. I'm gonna start with ripping the bumper off and horn and I'll probably have to pull this bracket off here and redo that and just make some room here, pull the radiator out, see if we can move that condenser back and see if we can make some room for that intercooler. All right, I think we're gonna be able to make this happen. So I got that intercooler sitting right on top of that main little cross beam there. And then that was just kind of holding it in there. I was just kind of chilling there for now. But right there, it should clear most of the grill. I should just be able to cut a few mounts off the grill and it should fit. I did get this whole system on with all these lines. These are aluminum lines. They bend very, very easy but I don't want to start bending the crap out of them right now. Just because if you bend them too much, they'll probably break. So those lines are gonna fit. You can see, I just kind of tilted it, twisted it this way, run all the lines behind the intercooler. And then the condenser is gonna go right behind the intercooler. And then we'll have to space that radiator out a little bit. But luckily there's so much room up in front of the motor. We're gonna have plenty of room for all this. So I guess all we gotta start doing is build mounts for the intercooler and then get the condenser in and mounted. 
and then build brackets for the radiator, space all that out. So we still got to figure all that out exactly where, how far we're going to push everything back. But luckily we got enough room, so this should go pretty easy. Check it out guys, we got the intercooler fit and behind the grill. All I did was cut the one main center mount off that was on the lower in the center. Everything else clear, so you can see it's all clipped in. The only thing we're gonna have to do permanently is chop that mount right there. Obviously the couplers are gonna come 90 and through the uh, course port there, so that one mount is gonna have to go but I didn't trim anything on the grill other than that one mount and it does fit. So I am happy with how it's sitting right there. I think what I'm gonna do along the bottom is just a piece of angle iron, just run it along these three mounts here, bolt it onto the mounts and then just bolt it through the uh, main core support right there. And then I'll just have to build some brackets for the upper mounts here and we should be good. All right, we got these brackets for the upper mount built. Just a simple 90 with a couple holes in it. I still gotta drill that one and the hole in the course part. And yes, I brought back the claw hammer for some of you guys that are hating on my claw hammer. But let's get these mounted up and drilled into the course part. These are just simple bolt right through there and through the back side just like that nothing too crazy this thing doesn't weigh a whole lot plus that bottom mount is really supported because it's just going to rest right on top of this bracket here There we go guys, we are mounted up solid. This thing is not moving. So there's how the lower mount turned out. Very, very simple, just a piece of angle iron. I'm gonna pull all these mounts off. You can see these ones are a little long. I'm gonna pull them off, spice them up a little bit. These look pretty boring. This one's hidden, so I'm not too worried about it. I'll probably just cut an angle on the end of it just to give it a little spice, but we are looking good. It is sitting exactly where I want it to. So looks like we'll just have to cut a hole right in there for the intercooler pipes to go through and then i did throw the intake and turbo on so you can see the upper port here i'm going to run up to the intake manifold and then the lower one is right about the same height as the turbo so that'll be easy i'll just have to do a little jag into the turbo and it should be pretty easy to build so let's pull these mounts off clean those up a little bit and I am gonna powder coat these, but like all my other little items, I'm not too worried about powder coating them right now. Once I have enough black to do, I'll probably powder coat the intake manifold, all these mounts, there's that one clutch mount, and just all the little tiny items that doesn't pay to get everything out, get everything set up, just to powder coat a couple little things.
Well, there it is, guys. Spiced up these mounts a little bit, gave them a little angle, and bottom one as well, looking a little better. So once we get those powder coated, it'll look a little better. But this is one thing kind of stressing about is fitting an intercooler and the whole AC system. But I guess I shouldn't have stressed because it's not going to be that bad. A lot of these lines are going to reach, no problem. This one's actually going to be a little bit too long. So I might have to kind of do a little bit of a loop or something. But not a huge deal. These, like I said, these are aluminum lines. They bend really easy, but you just got to be careful with them. You'll want to crack it. So you can see they did pretty tight bends like that 90. I mean, that you can do a 90, but without a tool, I probably wouldn't do a, a really tight 90 just because you don't want to crack a line, then you got to replace it. So I think that's about it for today, guys. It is 94 degrees, if you can see that. 94 degrees in the shop again. We got another heat wave, and I have the door open this morning, and it freaking heated up really quick. So I think tomorrow we're going to pick up right where we left off. We get all these lines situated get the condenser mounted, get the radiator mounted. Like I said, we got to build all those brackets to mount everything behind here. Well, that's a wrap, guys. I'm sweating my ass off. I'm going to go cool off in the house. We're going to pick this up tomorrow, right where we left off in this video, get everything mounted up, the condenser, get the radiator mounted, build all those mounts, and figure out all the lines and all that. So very excited to get this whole front end figured out. This one thing I was worried about, but it's actually going pretty smooth. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go smash that thumbs up button. We'll see you in the next one.